As you can see, I have been uh, painting with Derwent Inktens. I've been uh, painting a lot the last couple of days. And uh, let's continue this first impression. I've had some uh, very helpful comments on the first uh, videos. And um, the first one, the first, yeah, I don't think the second is out yet while I'm recording this one. Anyway, you have been uh, giving me a lot of advice about how to use these um, Derwent Inktense pencils and also about the felt tip water brush. I'm not going to try the felt tip water brush again in this video. I will make another video about that. But you uh, suggested that for my problem of um, uh, the ink tents not being permanent, you suggested that I should use uh, more water. So I'm going to test that now. This is a piece of Fabriano aquarel paper, watercolor paper, good quality. And uh, I'm going to test if I use more water, then maybe it does become permanent. So I'm first adding water, clean water, to the paper to make sure that there is enough water to, um, as you suggest, to activate everything. It's wet. Okay. Now I'm going to pick up with this same wet pencil uh, brush uh, color from the brush uh, from the pencil. Let's see. Now I cannot imagine that there is any particle that has ha that hasn't had any water now. So I will let it dry and then let's see what happens. Now that um, the test is drying, um, why not just continue? the joy of painting with ink tense pencils and uh, I think I will continue on this uh, nice little frog here. As you can see I've been working on uh, shading and layering. I'm going to continue doing that. I'm going to make here and add a touch of clean water from the water brush and then I'm going to use a darker brown called Willow, or no, Bark. Just a touch. I need my tissue to clean everything. So... Now I'm going to add a touch of green. I'm still figuring out whether it's better to let everything dry and then glaze on top of it or just mix. And um, I think I have a feeling that uh, glazing is better. So you put a layer of color on paper, you let it dry completely and then, oh dear, and then you add a next layer. Look at that, I <laughs> just completely wiped out what I just did. A little bit of that bark but it is you see I am um, I'm making a mess just I think I am making a mess because I'm distracted a little bit 
my nose itches and um, I have to sneeze uh, once in a while and of course uh, I uh, I try to do that uh, after I pause the video so I'm a little bit distracted so let's add some water here now I'm going to pick up a yellow and put that on top of this brownish tone that I put on earlier that looks nice now I am painting in painterly days right now and although that paper is very sturdy it can handle watercolor except yeah well surprisingly well because it's not traditional watercolor paper um, but still I'm a little bit careful because sometimes uh, the paper starts uh, peeling. So here's an another frog, and um, let's see. Let's try again. Let's try to do some more uh, shading. Practice makes perfect. Here is that dark brown called bark. And this time I am not putting water on the paper first, but I'm using the paper, uh, the paint on the brush. So wet on dry. And then I add a touch of water to make it float, flow. A little bit more. And picking up a touch of yellow. Now, it's not my intention to let the two meet, <laughs> the brown and the yellow. So. And let's pick up a piece of green, not too much. I'm experimenting right now, so I'm also experimenting whether shading with greens or shading with extra colors like brown, what works best. And that is what I love so much about Painterly Days. It's it really encourages you to just dive in and try different things. And if some, something goes wrong, every page is in the book twice. So you can mess up as much as you want. Because there is always that second page and you can start over again. Absolutely great idea from Christy Rice, the author of this uh, lovely book. This is a light green. I'm just trying several things. Now I'm going in wet in wet with a darker green. Well, it's not that dark. I don't have very dark greens in my set of 24 ink tense pencils. And this is a color called teal green. There's a touch of blue in it, so this is a cooler tone. This is the first frog that uh, I worked on, and this is the area that went wrong. So let's try again. I'm picking up 
the dark brown called bark. Here we go. There are many, many different styles of painting and drawing and coloring. And I have discovered that for me, things work best if every pencil stroke or every brush stroke I put on paper is perfect for my, my way of perfect, you know. No loose ends. I do love the happy accident, so I will. If a happy accident occurs, like over here, I love this. But when it comes to layering and blending, I wanted every layer to be finished perfectly blended and um, well I think that is the reason that my painting is so slow it takes so much time just like my coloring but well that's just the way it is for me I'll have to uh, live with it and you too. My videos can be painstakingly slow. And I sometimes have um, comments, people saying, this is so boring. Yep. Watching it can be boring, I think. But doing it is so much joy. Try it. Every pencil stroke is like magic. Well, this frog needs a lot more layering and shading here. The, the, his belly needs some shading. Let's put in a touch of willow. It's a medium brown. Let's see what happens. Just a touch and then with a damp brush I will blend it into the rest of the layers. A little more color. Well, let, let, let this lay uh, dry. A little bit and let's see how that testing went on the Fabriano paper. Here it is, completely dry. Now let's make sure that my brush is completely clean. So I will push out quite some water and it is absolutely, the tip is green but that is just the staining of the hairs. It's absolutely clean. So, if I add water to this, it shouldn't move. Let's see. Do you see that? It does move. So, in my opinion, this may only be completely permanent when it is extremely diluted. 
if that is the case. Now, it is more permanent than watercolor, that's for sure. So, I wonder what would happen if you put this on fabric and put it in the washing machine. Well, let's get back to the drawing in painterly days. This is a wonderful ladybug, a ladybird, ladybug, some people say ladybug. I've learned it's a ladybird and there was, I had a little problem with this uh, creature. I. Uh, because a, a little piece of his, its head here is missing, I just misinterpreted it completely. But this is a ladybird too, Christy Rice. I uh, asked her to uh, help me with this uh, creature because I didn't know what it was. And she was so kind to answer and say, no, it's a ladybird. And with her, many, many people told me, girl, that is a ladybird. Silly me. So let's add a touch of water here. And then a touch of red, bright red. Ooh, look at that. So these inkdance pencils, although they are quite permanent, they are not as permanent as I thought they would be. This is orange. So keep that in mind that if you add other layers and water that sometimes the color will flow. I'm also figuring out whether mixing the colors on paper or layering, so one, uh, one color let it dry and then add another one, which of the two is better. And so far my impression is that layering is better. So you put a color on paper, you let it dry, and then once it is dried, then you add another color, uh, another layer of maybe of another color that gives the brightest and clearest tones. I feel. You guys also suggested that I should um, watch a couple of artists who use uh, ink tents. Two of them I know. Lacry, Lisa from Lacry Fine Art, of course, I've seen doing her wonderful things with ink tents. And there were two others. The first one I have seen too, but the other one I didn't know about. So thank you for suggesting that. Here goes a darker red. I love ladybirds, beautiful animals. In our uh, former house, we had a garden and we had some boxwood bush bushes and every springtime, a huge amount of uh, ladybirds came out. So I'm not sure if they've been hibernating there. 
I think they have. Somewhere in March, on a sunny day, all those ladybirds would come out of the boxwood bushes and head for the apple trees. Thank goodness, because they would dare eat, feast on the lice. I think you call lice, you say lice in English. Let's pick up a little bit of black. So I really, really like this Inktense stuff, but I'm really using it like a watercolor paint, I think, so I'm never putting a pencil stroke on paper. I'm taking the, the paint from the pencil with a wet brush and then I put it on the paper with a wet brush, so it's just like taking paint from a pen, from a watercolor pen. So because I'm taking the paint from the tip of the pencil, you can see it has a very strange shape because I am picking it up like this. Well, there's another color there, but And then I'm sure slowly taking off more and more pigment. So, yeah. Okay. This is it for, for now. It is um, very versatile stuff, the Derwent Ink Tents. That's really nice. I think I will take it on with me on vacation. So I can finish this page. I will finish it uh, while being on vacation. And, um, well, I'm really looking forward to showing you the end result. And, um, well, if you want to buy Derwent Ink Tents, I can really recommend it. Um, I did a little bit of testing for the brightness of the colors. It looks quite bright, but if you compare it, for example, this ladybird, I painted it twice. This one is done with ink tents, and this one, this one is done with Sennelier watercolor paint. And um, I hope you can see it, but this Sennelier paint is brighter. And here is the ink tents. Now this is the difference between Inktense pencils and a professional watercolor paint. I have been painting with Cotman Windsor & Newton paint for years and years and years with so much joy and I still use it. I'm going to I'm using it in the watercolor along project also and I think the Inktense pencils have a similar uh, brightness as the Cotman paint. So it is a very good student grade quality of color, I think. So I can really, really recommend you these Inktense pencils. They are so nice. Okay, I'll get back to you as soon as this page is finished. Bye bye!